without fixing it or changing it, just noticing. And your hand might go to that place. And just notice more, is there more? And just noticing, just staying with the felt sense, is that familiar? Is that a familiar sense there for you? Is that familiar to the past or more sort of familiar to, to what's happening today? And feel free to toss my questions out. Just follow the body. Just getting curious about what's happening there. A yawn might come or you might notice some tension. Just allow that to come. There may be a sense of tired, and that may be something you want to clear. What are you noticing there now? Just asking into that place, is there something that that place is wanting you to notice? Or is it calling for something that it needs? Sometimes the felt sense can be like a little knock at the door, calling some attention to a place that is wanting to be attended to. Just really wait and allow that to come from the inside. So really allow your head to just have a break. How can you gently attend to that place? If the judge or that inner critic comes in, just clear that. You don't have to get it right. Now as you come back to that situation or that something that was sitting there in front of you, just notice, has that shifted? <coughs> Is there a small action step that you could take? And maybe you have already, just by noticing. There's tension in your body, just just notice that too. Your body is just having a conversation with you, that's all.
we'll just give you another minute to explore that. And then just noticing as you start to come to a close, is there more that you need there to close for now? And some of you may want to come back to this later and spend more time with this or not. What does your body need to close? And I'll just give you some time to, to do that. Maybe thank your body for what came, if that feels right. And just taking the time that you need now to slowly bring yourselves back into the room. So if you feel comfortable just to pair up with the same person that you paired up with before, and if you didn't have a partner or you don't have a partner, you know, maybe just <coughs> let me know and I'll pair you up with someone. Okay? So um, you'll have, you know, two, three minutes each. Off you go. Did you need a partner? No? Do you want one? Yeah. Do you need a partner? Because there's a gentleman over here that doesn't have someone.
usually when we when we teach this work, we spend like a whole two three days um, teaching the basic steps and basic focusing, um, and and so we did that in an hour and a half, <laughs> and the hour and a half is almost over. Um, so just so that you know, um, if you want the the PowerPoint, or uh, we have a list of resources that we can send out to you. Um, you just need to give us permission, or give um, Skills for Mindful Living permission to send that to you. Um, and so that, that would be great, or you can write your email down and we can send you the resources. Um, so that's that piece. Um, and we, we have time for questions um, and discussion. We don't have to be out of here until 9 o'clock. So if some of you are wanting to kind of talk some more, we can. Um, it's completely up to you. So I just want to just sort of put that out there. But are there any questions? Uh, yeah? Do you use, um, <laughs> when you do this with groups, how much of it do you use? What, what do you invite from the participants? You know, do people share their experience? How do you manage it? Um, well, I can give you an example of this past weekend when I was working with, uh, I was doing a vicarious trauma exercise with focusing. Um, and so we did a little mini kind of thing like what you just did here. But uh, people are working with a piece of a something like a, a, a bit of depression or a bit of sadness or um, a piece of something that's been following you around for a while. Um, and, and that was done in a group, and so, and then you do like a paper ripping exercise, I won't get into all of that now, but, so you go through the experiential uh, as a group, and then pair off, just like you did, uh, and then there's like a group round and a, and a group sharing of, of that experience. Uh, and people can pass if they, if they want to pass, but, um, so all of, all of these, you know, there's a lot of experientials that we've developed or that have been developed in focusing oriented therapy, whether it's an art therapy exercise or uh, working with vicarious trauma or working with the inner critic. Um, and, you know, you all have your own ex exercise and experientials that you do with groups, but we're doing it in a focusing oriented way. Um, so it just depends on the group and what the group needs are. Yeah. I'm wondering about the efficacy of using focusing techniques with small, with younger people, like children, younger adolescents, even. Yeah. Yeah. There is a, um, a, a woman in Holland who does, was it a man? Um, there's a group in Holland, actually, that do Focusing for Children. There's a book called Focusing with Children. There's a whole conference that they had in Toronto last year on Focusing with Children. Um, it's very effective with children, actually. Yeah, I've been focusing with my own daughter, and uh, she's asked me to do. I mean, she doesn't want to do it now that she's 13, but she did when she was six. <laughs> and uh, doesn't want to do anything now that she's 13. <laughs> but children but, have that. That you know, they have. There is that imaginative play, yeah. right? Um, and so, I mean, in my child practice, I do a lot of focusing work. Uh, I don't call it focusing, and they don't know that that's what they're doing, but. They, I mean, they teach me about focusing. Um, it's just a way of noticing the body and noticing and being, you know, being beside a something. And there are all kinds of kids are always talking from a felt sense kind of place, right? Not always, but they do talk a lot from that kind of place. It's, it, it seems to come naturally to them. I think focusing is a natural process. It, it comes naturally to a lot of people. And so um, with kids who are very much in their bodies already, um, it's re it really uh, it can work very well, um, and also for kids who have trouble putting words to feelings, it's a good it's a good way to get them to to be able to do that. Yeah. Sometimes, not Sometimes. always. No, we yeah. Should. Yes. Do you ever include uh, someone's kind of spirituality in the process of doing focus? Yes. Um, actually, it was something I wanted to mention I didn't get to in the, um, the clearing a space was um, one person had done research on clearing a space and then rather than move into something else to engage with that cleared space and um, th that um, opened up a very spiritual um, dimension for a lot of the people that she did that with. 
And what she, what she said is, um, in her research she found that over time, what happened was that people that worked that way with, with the clearing, with the expanded clearing of space was that they, they would um, start to live from that place of uh, the, the larger self or the self that isn't so much um, concerned about the day-to-day -day issues. It, it's a, it's a, it kind of brings you to a place where um, it's bigger than that and um, the, see, what she found is the more people did that, um, the more they kind of move the locus of their self <coughs> to that to that larger place, and they were still in the same life with the same problems, but with a very different attitude towards them. And um, I, there's a lot of literature on focusing as a spiritual practice. There's a number of a number of people who write about that, and I do. I think it's inherently spiritual, although. Jedlin would never use that word, yeah. ever, because it's too loaded. He won't use any word that's loaded because then people have a lot of assumptions about it. But I think he would say that too, that it's, it's an inherently spiritual practice. It's inherently holistic and accessing something larger than ourselves, for sure. Yeah, it's a big and question. I, I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, in no matter what modality you're using, I mean, for me, uh, I work a lot in, in the indigenous communities and, you know, I think this work is sacred work that we're doing. Um, that's my own personal belief. Um, I feel like we are in ceremony when we sit with someone. It's a it's a kind of a ceremony. There's a ritual and, and there's a ceremony that happens. So um, it's it's. I find for me it's hard to kind of uh, separate the two um, because I think it is for me anyway spiritual work. No matter what I'm doing, and I don't all only do focusing. So I know that it's time. Uh, if you want to stay and you have questions, stay. If you need to leave, please go. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's lots of information online if you go to uh, Focusing. The Focusing Institute has information. Uh, Google Leslie Ellis and, and her training is there. The GIBC, there's training there and Aboriginal Focusing Oriented Therapy. So, And we'll get that stuff to you um, somehow. Okay? And if you want to stay and chat, no, we'll be here until, until 9 o'clock.